You're listening to the Teak Nation Podcast, where we strive to educate, inspire, and entertain you with tips and lessons from frauders and friends of TKE. Welcome in, Teak Nation Podcast listeners. My name is Alex Swenson. I'm sitting very, very close to Donnie Aldrich because we are on location in Colorado Springs at the 34th Charles R. Walgreen Jr. Tall Cab Epsilon Leadership Academy. Try getting all that in a polo. I believe we have, and participants just received them, but yes, it is phenomenal That's, to be it's here. It's a mouthful. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're very excited. We are here in Colorado Springs at LaFerre Conference and Retreat Center in the cafeteria slash dining hall area, and we're, we're coming to you from our premier program. We've been talking about this a lot on the podcast lately. Donnie and I have both mentioned it numerous times over the summer as uh, a week that we have both been very much looking forward to, and now we're here. Did it live up to the hype? I guess that's where we should start. It's almost over. Absolutely. Now, we still have to get across the line here, and we don't want to inflate. Yeah, we don't, want to, get ahead we, we don't want to inflate egos, but this has been a very you know, strong. high step into the 10-yard right. line. Right. It's been a very strong leadership academy class. And for us, you and I, first time being in front of humans presenting and yeah. working with them in the last 18 months. How does that make you feel? Energetic. Very excited. A little uh, fuel in the tank. Yeah. You know, the, the, the dry air, pretty low air quality out here. So if you're interested in that type of thing, uh, it's it's messed with me a little bit. I might sound a little different than normal. Also using different microphones, so uh, that could be it too. But what happens that, if this actually makes you sound better? Then I guess I'm moving to Springs, doing the podcast from here, and hoping the forest fires continue. Well, the the disappointment of the week has really been our inability to see Pikes Peak, unfortunately, due to some of the forest fires that you mentioned. Yep. But the weather has been nice and warm here, especially for Colorado Springs. Very, I'm, very warm and, and sunny the entire time, which allowed us to do all the outdoor t- activities we've wanted to and to really put on the level of program that we seek to do. I think I want to have a conversation about climate change real quick with the forest fires. Are you down for that? Let's pass on that, but okay. let's go ahead Next and week. possibly engage some of our participants, well, I, get some wanna, folks on the podcast. I want to go back. Yeah. Speaking of outdoor activities, we did play basketball this week. Quite a bit of basketball, right? We did, and I'm sure you would love to talk about that as it was one of your greatest successes in your T career. Yeah, buckle up. So uh, every year, the staff members, the OTs of the crew, OT is, is short for old timer, for those who are unaware, strap strap up. I believe right? if you're trying to reach a certain demographic, you want to use OG. Oh, okay, I get it. Different thing, though. Lace, lace the shoes up, lace up the Nikes. Throw on a Zion jersey, a headband, a wristband, arm, arm a shooting sleeve, yeah. pair of socks, all the all the accessories, and we we go play basketball, play half court, four on four, staff versus participants. You're probably thinking, unless you've been to Leadership Academy, you know this is not true, that the participants would dominate, right? They're they're college students, they're in the primes of their athletic lives, and we are all thirty plus. Right, takes us a good 10, 15 minutes to get moving in the morning. A bunch of dad bods. Yeah, no. Kyle Erdman, who was, is going to join us later, threw out his back earlier. He's what, thirty one years old? I mean, thirty one years old. He threw out, he threw out his back like four times this week. Kyle Erdman dominated a bunch of nineteen to twenty two year olds this morning on the basketball court. We played eight games. We won eight games. I think the closest one was eleven to seven. 11 and 9. I'm getting 9 from, from Ryan from Idaho. I think, but Ryan is stretching. I think he's misremembering. I'll give him one game to 9, though, if that helps him sleep at night. It, we wiped the floor with him. Everyone stepped up. Everyone on the team Reese Linville, Joey Crisuanos, Donnie, Kyle, myself. We had Jed Collins. We had Colin Merkel. People really step up in every, their role. Every, everyone People gave a lot of energy. The guys, the, the members, all you, all you youths out there, learn to pass the ball. Just trying, just trying key. to play ISO, trying to step out behind the, the, the two-point line, chuck up shots, pass the ball, post up, cut, set screens, right? Like, that's how you win basketball games, and that's how we went 8-0 this week. So if you are out there listening, and you're thinking about coming to Leadership Academy, and you're thinking about bringing your basketball shoes and your gym shorts, start working on passing the ball, playing defense, rebounding, and understanding the fundamentals of of the game and i'm telling you that knowing it's going to lessen our chances to win i don't think it's going to matter all that much but i i I want it to be competitive next year i guess is what i'm saying it got kind of boring so this week we talk about humility and we have not talked about humility i miss that 
I was getting up. I was getting up jump shots. We have talked about humility. I was getting up jump shots during the humility session. Humility. And I think it's something. Luckily, the next academy is only about nine months away. Yeah. It'll be a June academy, which is we're great. Getting, Not long to close. wait for the next one. And I might just stay here. You, that's probably a wise investment. And so you got an opportunity to invest in some humility over the next eight to nine months. But that's a personal choice. Or I could get more jumpers up. Or you could do both. I mean, it's not one does not beset or the other. Or jumpers. Got it. All right. We got our first guest lined up. It is the aforementioned old man, bad back and all. He's putting on some bio freeze right now. He's running a little behind. No, it's Kyle Erdman. Kyle, will you step up to the microphone? What do you? How are you going to take an interview from across the room? Kyle, we're going to play word. Go ahead. Took me a minute to get here. Yeah, we're going to play word association. Okay. Basketball. Victory. Can you elaborate, please? Eight games, eight wins. Zero loss. Zero losses. Zero losses. Yeah, that's, the math adds up. Yeah. Still right. got it. All right. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle is, uh, full disclosure, one of my best friends. That's how he got on the program. If you want to be on Teak Nation podcast, befriend me. Um, you've been doing this for a while. This is your, what, third or fourth leadership academy on the team. You're here as a participant. What does this week mean to you? Why do you keep coming back? Why have you chosen to invest a week of your life in this program? Yeah, third year, third year, Al, uh, as a facilitator, and I, I did attend back in 2009. It's, uh, it, well, one, it's a special place, right, at La Ferre. Um, two, as you, as you look back at your, at your Teak journey as a collegian, it's, a, um, it's, an, easy, it's an easy place to, to realize that this is where you, you stepped up and started maturing as a, as a man, as a leader. And it's crazy to think that a lot of the leadership lessons and principles I learned as a 19-year-old I still carry with me as a 31-year-old and professional leader in Seattle. Um, it comes full circle. We were able to see Brian Keller earlier today, yep. our small group yep. leader, right, from, from back then. So um, great to give back. And, and again, you said premier program that we put together. You and Donnie, the team, do a great job with Chris Niles. And, uh, and, and this is it. This is, you know, if you're going you're gonna to step away from the, from the kids and the family for seven days, there's, there's no place I'd rather be. So Kyle, one aspect of this role that you're serving in, in terms of being a, a small group leader, it's very selfless in terms of the work that you do throughout the event, the amount of conversation, energy that you put into your small group. But let's let's shift the focus here. What insights have you taken out of this week? We've had some phenomenal speakers, tremendous guests who have come in. What are insights or pieces that you've learned that you could share with our listeners? Yeah, so... It's been, you know, it's been interesting. I think there's, I think there's been two things I've been looking at, Donnie, right? It's been one, my own personal experience. You can't help but listen to Frater Winnington and Jed Collins and some amazing speakers like yourself and, and reflect internally. And I think there's also been takeaways from my group, right? Because this experience after all is for them. Um, starting with, you know, starting with my small group, as you alluded to, the things that they're digesting right now, the things they're talking about, these are, you know, for example, I'll give you one. We listened to, to Chris yesterday from George Washington University talk about communication style. And talking about the difference between communicating in a calm manner versus an emotional manner and the impact that he was able to see and study here at Colorado Springs. And these are lessons, you guys, that in the business world still apply. And it's, it's, and it's so great for these takeaways to um, help them with their chapters back home, but know that they're also going to be able to carry it with them after college. I think, I think personally, there's been this game of inches um, from Jed Collins' conversation a couple of days ago. Every, every percent matters. Every step matters. The importance of trying I think is something that, that we allude to. And, and for me, it's been a personal reflection that there's a lot of things that I've set aside that, that I want to start, um, but haven't exactly done that, which is start. And so it's, it's been highly motivating for me. Um, and, you know, and what I'll tell you is I, my teak bucket is, is 100% filled every time I, I leave here. And so ready to, like you said earlier, Donnie, finish, finish strong and, and uh, get, this, get this group heading out tomorrow and finish it strong tonight. We've mentioned Jed a few times now. He's a friend of the Teak Nation podcast, Your Money Vehicle. Uh, showcase that. Jed is also a very good basketball player. I know we, we mentioned basketball a little earlier once, um, and, and Jed really helped us out. So, Jed, if you're listening, thank you for that. Kyle, thank you for your time and your energy. Kyle works for Zillow. How's the ho housing market looking? It's looking strong. Strong. Still strong. Yes. All right. Now's a great time to sell your home. Teenage nice work, Al. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye. Who's next? I don't know. I mean, somebody step Come up. On, let's go. Yeah, we got. Name, st name and chapter. All right. Our next guest. Our, yeah. Go are, ahead. Are you going to introduce even? We're bringing a new guest. We're bringing, we're bringing a new guest. Name and chapter, please. Josh Gallagher, Ziota. This, this is a lot of pressure. I know as soon as I said we were bringing guests in, you got hyped. 
and now you're here, and I can see it in your eyes. You're a little nervous. Yeah, I'm a little nervous, but All I'm right. excited. So, Josh, not everyone understands what Zyota means. So, can you tell the, the good folks out there what university you're a part of? University of Central Florida, best cool. college football team in the nation. 2017 national champs. Josh. Purportedly. You have. Self anointed. Uh, graced us with your haircut this week, which is which is nice. You can see that in the official Teak Leadership Academy Flickr page, which will be posted soon. You have also, I think, had a, a, a bit of an up and down experience. There's been some activities you've excelled in. There's been some that I think you've, you've probably learned a little bit. What to you stands out the most in terms of the activities we've done and the different leaders and facilitators you've worked with as a lesson that you're going to take home with you? One of the biggest things I think that stuck with me this week was that not all hard workers are the best leaders. Uh, I've taken this weekend to evaluate that and realize that a good leader leads by example and is also a good follower as well, supports the people around them, is able to sympathize with them and be empathetic and not just always be hard on the people that are around them. Josh was listening. That was good. Yeah. Josh, what are some lessons you've learned from some of the other participants that have been part of the program. That's a great aspect for folks who don't know about Leadership Academy. Yes, we have phenomenal facilitators and speakers who come in, but also you get a lot of time to interact with guys from all over North America. We even have a Canadian prodder who's here. Talk about some of those experiences you've had either inside the scheduled aspects of the program or back in your cabin. I think definitely my uh, black hat, which is we said the black hat was the opposite type of member uh, that like kind of is the opposite of you definitely be more loving i learned from uh, my small group too gotta be gotta be willing to relate and show the guys that you care about them because sometimes it's you know tough love and sometimes you got to be a little bit softer you got to know what type of people you're dealing with and what side of the spectrum they come from and i think that's the biggest thing i learned that you don't need to change your leadership style but you got to learn how to communicate your ideas to people thank you josh it was very well done you conquered your fears of speaking into a microphone and delivered some good content for us. I also conquered my fear climbing. That's right. Very you high did. up. You, did. you got up on the ropes today. That was pretty solid. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate the time. We appreciate you being with us here at Leadership Academy. Awesome. Go UCF. There you go. All right. Bringing in a, another you. guest. Josh just dropped nice. a thank, thank you, you note off for Donnie and not for me. So... Got a little awkward. Something you have to process. Um, I will work through it on my own time. All right, Connor, step up. Name and chapter. Hello, everyone. Uh, Connor Clappin, Iota Kappa at Clarkson University. Where is Clarkson University for all those who might not know? Yeah, so I think they understand where Central Florida was, so that was a little bit of an easy start for us. You step yeah. step yeah. a little closer to the mic. It, it definitely helps when, you're, when your location is in the name of university. Yes. But, um, so Clarkson University is located in this tiny uh, town in upstate New York called Potsdam. Uh, it's about, if you look at the top hump of New York, we're right about there, about 30 minutes from the Canadian border. In fact, we're part of the international province, even though we're in the United States. It's a so, great Teak geography lesson. You might remember Charlie Reagan from the Teak Nation podcast. I do remember a Charles. great mentor. An of alumnus of Clarkson University and apparently a, a mentor for Connor. Connor, who is somebody that you have met this week that you had not met previously who has made an impact on you as an individual? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the biggest people who have made an impact on me is my uh, partner in our, in our groups. His name's uh, Brendan. Uh, he's Brendan what? Okay, put oh. me on the spot here. Oh, uh, that's all right. Brendan. He is from, uh, he is Brendan, from, he's Brendan, from uh, Brendan, Southern you know California. Brendan, 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 you know who Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Brendan, you know who you are. Long Beach. He's so, from Long Beach. All right. Yep. So, uh, you know, today when we were doing the climbing course, we really, we really stepped up to it and we, we had a group partner climbing activity that I didn't think we were going to be able to do because if you don't know me, I weigh about 250, uh, 250 pounds, six foot five, and he's about five, 10, 70 pounds. And not really, <laughs> but he's very small. And uh, and we, I didn't know how we were going to be able to do it, but once we got on there, we communicated, we worked together, and we, we did something that I didn't think we were going to be able to do, and it was a great feeling. Connor, who are one of the VIP guests that we've brought in this week that really has blown you away in terms of having an opportunity to have access to them or hear, hear their message? Who's someone who, again, you, you talked about a participant that you never would have met. Who's a, a VIP person that we've brought in that you've really enjoyed mm -hmm. spending time with or hearing some of their words? For sure, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Frater Elmer, Elmer last night was really big. Uh, Elmer Smith. Just Elmer to Smith. Clarify. Yeah. He being able to see someone that that supports the fraternity so much is really impactful because you know someday down the line I would I wish to be that successful that I can give back to not only Teak but the other things I'm involved in my campus and other ways. So and, I, and his met his mess one of his messages yesterday was about uh, a, a Frater that had passed away that he was close to 
and I and I was thinking down the line about those the people in my chapter that if I was in that position, who's gonna who's gonna come see me, and who would I go see? And it just kind of made it made me think and reflect upon what this what this brotherhood really means. Very cool, very cool. I uh, I agree with you. I think we could all hope to be so successful as to contribute a million dollars to Tall Cap Epsilon someday. So I'm right there with you, Connor. We appreciate your time. Appreciate you being here, man. Listen to this episode, please. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I download it four times on four different devices. <laughs> Boost those numbers. We got sponsorships to get after. Excellent. Thank you. All right, Connor. thanks, Connor. All right, who's next? Step step on up. Next we gotta go rapid fire. We got a whole line now. Name and chapter. Well, sorry, name and colony, please. Hey, hey. My name is Kira Dungana. I go to the University of Miami, and I am currently part of the Gamma Delta Colony. Will you slow? Will you say your name again, but slow? He's from the U. No, I know the he's from U. the U. Yeah. Everyone knows where that is. Cure. Care. Care. Yep. Okay. Care. And then your last name. Dungana. Dungana. Okay. I think I mostly got that right. Yeah, you week. got it right. Rapid All right, fire. Care. Uh, you're you're part of a colony, as we just noted. That's a unique experience. That is, is uh, we we really try every year to bring in a number of guys who are part of colonies because I personally believe leadership Academy is a crucial aspect having leaders who have attended this program in colonies to get them to chartering. What have you learned this week? That's going to help you get your group in a position to charter in the near future. Oh my God. So many things. Um, I've been a leader in different organizations before different clubs and different things throughout my, you know, my school career. And this is just so different. Being a part of Teak is so different. So just, having everyone else here who's had that experience and just absorbing things from them of, okay, this is good. This is what we do. This is bad. This is not what we should do. I don't know. I can't divulge into specifics because there's so many things. You're talking about perspective. Yeah. Perspective is super important. Um, and just, I think having this group right over here and staying in contact with them is one of my main goals out of this. So I can learn from them even after this Academy ends. Okay. We're getting ready to go into recruitment season, right? Yep. School's getting ready to start. Can you talk about you just joined and started a group from scratch in the middle of the pandemic? What are things that were done that excited you to want to join a fraternity that you can help communicate out to your fellow frauders to, to put to work as we start getting into recruitment season? Well, what sort of con questions and aspects were shared with you about the fraternity experience? I think, you know, Talk App Epsilon really did a good job of selling themselves. And it wasn't just... Like, oh, we have this. You should totally join. It was like they really reached my personal values as well. It's Teak is so different compared to the rest of the fraternities on campus. And, you know, when I came to the University of Miami, I don't think I had a single plan to join a fraternity. And Teak was able to really reach out to me and say, hey, we're different. We're new. So I hope that we're going to be able to stick to that message when we recruit this year. I hope the members that we have currently are going to be able to express that, express what they felt what they have gained through Teak. Lovely. Last thing, uh, you're a bit of a chef you shared with us yesterday. You also shared some weird ass food that you've been working on. Why don't you, why don't you enlighten the Teak Nation podcast listeners about that dish you, uh, you talked about? <laughs> the salmon ice cream. The salmon yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Um, well, I dabble in cooking. I've been cooking since I was like super young. Um, but, you know, food is, there's so many things that you can do with it. And this is kind of an experiment. This type of cooking is what I wanted to do, something that just messes up with your head. So it's a dessert that it, it is what it sounds. It salmon is a ice salmon cream. ice cream yeah. served with- It's not just like pink, yeah, but so it's strawberry. And you're just like, oh, salmon ice cream. It tastes mm -hmm. like salmon. No, it's got salmon involved in it. Yeah. Some would argue the food we're eating here this week at La Ferre, they're doing some experiments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the breakfast was, was quite interesting. Um, well, I'm vegan right now, so that was even oh, more interesting. Yeah. yeah, just for a year, just to get better of at cooking. Of course, yeah, we've, we, we've all done the vegan for a year thing. That's old news, yeah. It, is it? No. Oh, okay, I, I was going to say. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so the salmon ice cream, yeah. is there anywhere that anyone can actually find that and, and try it, or do you just make it in your kitchen? I don't know. I just, I mean, I just made it in my kitchen. So you're I not going to like throw it out at a restaurant somewhere and who knows, just, you know, right, look out we'll, for me in the future. We'll put in the show notes. All right. Yeah. Thank you, sure. sir. Of course. Thank you for doing this. I, I really have learned a lot. Don't That's forget. Good. Don't forget to download this episode. I, I will five different devices. It. Yes, sir. All right. Care. Thank All righty. Thank you. All right. Next guest. We're probably just, probably just going to have to go one question from here on out. I don't want people to be late. Oh, we're doing it. All right. We got a, we got a joint effort here. Names two for one, two, a twofer. So we, we now have four people talking on two microphones, which is extremely convenient. Names and chapters. All right. Uh, I'm James Maida. I'm Frank Hernandez. 
we're both from the Omega chapter of Tau Kappa Epsilon at Albion College. Ooh. All right. So this is this is a new a new angle where you guys have the ability to bounce what you're learning off of one another. I attended Leadership Academy with a chapter brother as well. I thought that really enhanced my experience. Have you felt like the opportunity to go back, talk to another guy who's going to go back and live the same experience you live day in and day out? Has that been helpful? And, and how are you guys going to carry this into the operations of the Omega chapter? You want to do that one? Yeah. So, well, it's probably only going to be one question. So you guys, you guys can both tackle it. Okay, cool. Um, I mean, it's definitely helped having James here because we've been able to talk about different things because I've only been in the chapter as a dual position. So I've only seen things as an exec member and having James around as an active member helps me see things in different perspectives and lets me think about different ways on how to improve the chapter and how I can be a better leader and things like that. Yeah, no, throughout this entire time that we've been here, um, Frank has actually come up and talked to me. We've been talking together about how ways that different ways we can uh, implement what we've learned here into our experience and as well as um, what we've, we've been reflecting on our own chapter as well to see how the normal members like myself who haven't really held any dual positions um, are seeing the current exec board and what the view of the house is and all that kind of stuff. So. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you guys sharing that, James, because I think that's that's a different unique perspective. A lot of the guys here are officers or hold positions as chairman. And so to have you here as somebody who, who has that different perspective is, is key. So appreciate you guys both taking the risk, coming out here, leaving Michigan for uh, a few days and, uh, and being with us. Appreciate you stepping up to the mic. It's too hot. Don't forget. Well, <laughs> it, it is, it is a bit warm, but uh, we'll, we'll play through it. All right, guys. Thank you guys. Right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Oh, there. They're rolling in now. They are rolling in now. All right, name and chapter. Hello, my name is Richard Perez. I am from the Kappa Sigma chapter at the City College of New York. That's in New York. That is in New, New York. York City, That's I easy. would imagine. Right, yeah. yes. All right, you want to take this one? Sure. Richard, who has been your favorite presenter from some of the VIP folks that we brought in this week? My favorite presenter would have to be you. Well, not me. I'm not that big of a VIP. Who are some of the other folks right. that we Did brought in? Did he say in? you? Was he yeah, talking yeah, yeah. to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Was moving up. He was talking to you. He said you. He said you. That could be Who are some us. of the folks we've flown in that you've really enjoyed their message? Um, the general. The general. Okay, yeah. so Ch General Charles Whittington, Major General Charles Major Whittington, general. if he's out there listening. Former member of the Grand Council. Yes, two-star general. What What were the themes of his message that really spoke to you? The, theme, the main message that spoke to me was having a true north that you can always rely on. Because there are various times in anyone's life where people like go astray. And having a true north really sets you forward and brings you back to the path of success. How excited are you as you start heading back to campus and coming off this event? For all those folks who invested and have contributed to the Leadership Academy, what has it done for you as you start to think about heading home and what you're going to do to move this forward? Uh, so for me... Well, when I first came out in the past couple of days, I was planning to go in like head first at 100%. But what I've learned today was that I should do it step by step with the dominoes, where I should start small and slowly build that momentum without like fully turning the Ferrari around. I have to turn the, my chapter around. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate you. Thanks for being on the podcast. All right. Next up, name and chapter. Dylan Rose, you Beta Upsilon at the University of Maine. University of Maine. Yep. Yep. All right. Dylan, how'd you feel about your performance? Have, <laughs> have you enjoyed the indoor activities in the classroom more? Or have you enjoyed being outdoors more? Uh, I personally enjoyed the indoor activities more. Oh, really? I, I'm more of a, a visual and, an like a, and an auditory learner. Um, and so hearing these people, uh, these you know great speakers talk to me. And, like myself. Yes, yeah, so like yeah. you. Like and Donnie. Donnie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Donnie. <laughs> um, hearing these great speakers and having time to reflect on what they said. Um, that's how I learn more. That's how I change my values. That's how I change these things um, about me that will make me a better leader. And for me, playing a game doesn't do that for me so much. Um, okay. I, can, I can reflect on a game, but I don't know. I, you, like, you, like the, you like the content. I, I appreciate that. Any, any quickly, anything that stands out to you from the classroom that you've, that you've really enjoyed? My favorite thing was um, from Jed Collins, the oh, okay. NFL, uh, oh, yeah. former NFL player. Um, he spoke about always looking for inches to take yep. because inches lead to you know yards, which leads to full field touchdowns and stuff, which leads to the Super Bowl. Um, and so I've really been looking for inches since I've been here. My inches have been me pushing slightly harder, making things slightly more challenging. Um, we did a ropes course earlier, and I did not have 
I did not think I had the physical strength to finish one of the challenges. Um, but the inch there was getting up to the top um, with all of my brothers here supporting me. And so that's something I'm, I think I'm going to take with me for a while. Good for you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank Appreciate you. it. Don't make, me, don't make me say it. Don't make you say what? Name your chapter. Uh, I'm Reese Naylor from the beta chapter at Milliken University. All right, little uh, little historical perspective yeah, here. He's inside the triangle. From the, yeah. He is inside. I am the triangle. It's so a great honor. Congratulations on that. Thank you. You, know, you put a lot of work into it. Reese, what was your favorite activity or simulation? Not game. Don't not say game. game. Don't say game. It's not a game. Right. Um, my favorite activity was the zoom out. It was a perspective game, and we all had different pictures that. Game. He I'm sorry. Game, like, it was a perspective. Right a perspective Very little activity. time between when we told him not to say game and him saying game. Perspective activity where we all got individual pictures and at first glance they had almost no relation to each other. When if you all lined up in the correct order, you saw from a little dot in outer space all the way through the town and through cruise ships and everything that was connected that you ended up on top of a rooster. So it's very large picture to small picture. We're, we're ruining a lot of activities for future leadership academies. You still have to work through the activity. What were the That's takeaways true. in the activity for you? Um, it was really about how I may see one thing, but other people have a different perspective on that. And I can't see that perspective. So I have to communicate with them. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next up. Don't worry, I won't make you say it. Jared Jimenez, Iota Kappa Chapter, Clarkson University. Don't, don't, oh, another Clarkson don't, University. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> They're five minutes from Canada. Yes. Yep. Clarkson, so you, so I, I want to ask you the same question I asked the guys from, from Albion because it is a unique experience to have a chapter brother here. How have you taken advantage of that? What conversations have you had? How are you going to work off of one another as you go back home? So one of the biggest things, having another chapter brother here, we kind of, we spoke to each other before we came and kind of said, we're not going to hang out the whole time here. We'll come, we'll, we'll say hi, talk to each other a little bit, but getting different perspectives, getting our own experience of Leadership Academy. I mean, it doesn't help our chapter very much. We both come back with the same notes, the same ideas and the same beliefs about what we learned. So kind of by meeting new people, getting different experiences, listening to the speakers and not talking about it during the speakers, writing down our own notes. I mean, I've got pages on pages of notes that I've been taking throughout this weekend and I actually did speak with him briefly before coming uh, here, and we had we took completely different things away from the general speeches, and even just like the rope course or the the outdoor games we were playing earlier with the plates. So I find that interesting. Excellent. Do you know Charlie Reagan? Yes, I do. All right, good. We like Charlie. Charlie's a good guy. Great guy. Thank you, Jared. We appreciate you, man. Thank you very Don't much. Don't forget to listen. Jared. Thank you. All right, looks like we have one. Individual left here, one, one, remaining one lucky soul, name and chapter. Anthony DeRobertis, Upsilon Chi, downtown Brooklyn, St. Francis. Brooklyn. Yeah. Best pizza in New York City. Yes, sir. No, what? We, who has the best pizza? Best L&B, Spumoni Gardens. Where's that? Is it Brooklyn? Uh, Bensonhurst. Yeah. I don't know any of those words. Right. Yeah. Was, just it, was that a street? Were those two streets? Bensonhurst is the basically the city inside of Brooklyn, the area. Hmm. All right. We'll have to check it. Well, I'll have to check it out. Right. I'll and let then you know. You'll explain to me the subway. I'll let you know how it goes. Subway transition yeah, you take to get there, I'll and I will just keep my mouth shut and follow your lead. That's right. That's how we got to a, a Pacers Nets game back in the day. That's Barclay good. Center. That's a good time. Okay. Uh, Upsilon Kai, you guys have had some ups and downs recently. Correct. What is it about this experience that you think is going to take you toward a permanent peak and allow the chapter to grow and thrive in a way that it was five, six years ago, knowing some of the guys from your group who attended this program had a little bit of a downturn, right? And now you're, you're on your way back up. How are you going to take this home and, and make an impact? I think we've been feeding off of the same energy that we've been taking in the fraternity repetitively and everybody's been seeing it the same. Uh, coming here, I've taken a lot out of it like the last person said, a lot of notes, it's very influential. Uh, I've never learned as much as I've learned here. Um, it's it's crazy because we've had people from Leadership Academy come to our chapter, but talking to them, they told me, go, go, go. But I never seen them really put it put in the work that I feel that when I go back, I'm ready to put in now because I really, I really took something from this. That's great. 
That's great. Yeah, I, I think we're going to wrap up today with a lot of what you're talking about, which is how to take it home, how to make an impact. So I'm glad your your mind's there and I'm glad you're ready to go and, and do something about it. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The line has completely evaporated. That was we, we just set a record for the highest number of guests, guests on Teak Nation podcast. A lot podcast. of great guests. Maybe the highest number of guests on any podcast ever. I don't know if that's verifiable, but we'll TJ, to, we'll TJ have, look yeah. into it. We'll have to have our tech team look into that. I think if we say our it. Our expert research team. If we say it and nobody comes and tells us that we're wrong. That would be inaccurate. It, I see where you're going to finish the sentence and you're wrong. No, it's not how it uh, works. We'll right. talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. All right. Any closing thoughts? It's been a great week. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have and can't wait to finish it off the right way. And then we got to get to work, my man. We got to get out there and start oh, visiting man. some groups. We do have the to year's get to kicking work. off. We got to do some recruiting. Got to get folks lined up and ready to roll. We actually may be recording the next podcast from another location. Very we'll possible. Let's see if yeah. time's out. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I, hearing those individuals speak, all of them, it, it drives home for me how important this is and, and the work that's being done here and Again, we've said this on many episodes, but if you've not been to Leadership Academy as a participant, as a volunteer, as a facilitator, do your best to get out here. I know it's a selective program. I know not everyone does have that opportunity, but do whatever you can to put yourself in position to be here because it really is the most wonderful thing that we do in Teak. And I think every person who attends Leadership Academy to a man says it is the highlight of their fraternity experience. So uh, it's a blessing to be able to be out here year in and year out. I do not Take that lightly for myself. I know you don't take it lightly. And uh, like you said, we're only nine months away from the next one. So we'll fire it back up soon. Ready to roll. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to download this on seven different devices. Really boost those numbers. Simultaneously. simultaneously yeah. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.